Good morning, friends. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Welcome to our weekly garden walk and talk. This is an informal garden walk that I do every week in April and May. And I'm going to tag on a special segment to the end of these videos, which is a book recommendation segment. So each week I'll pick a topic and then I'll grab my favorite books on that topic and we'll head into the library and talk about those together. And I hope you'll share some recommendations of books that you like on the topic as well. So this week is going to be garden design books for people who aren't garden designers. But without further ado, let's get into the garden walk and talk. So we're standing right here in my main flower walk. I thought I would start here because this is the gate that we didn't enter through last week. And right here I have a beautiful tulip that I love so much. It's called Negrita Double. This beautiful double eggplant purple tulip with wonderful green streaks around the outer edges. Mingling nicely with that, we have Mount Hood Daffodil. A little bit dirty after a lot of the rainstorms that we had. You can see the peonies are coming back. And behind that, I have planted alliums. So we'll walk down the main flower walk together, but I don't wanna miss showing you that Pueblo is still in bloom. And Pueblo is going to continue to be in bloom probably until May. It really starts early and has a really long window of blooming in the garden. I think in terms of the Burgarten sage right here, I think maybe, maybe it's like lavender and its time is just up. I think I will go ahead, prune it back, move it somewhere else, and I think I'm going to replace this hedge of Burgarten sage with geraniums. Let me know what you think about that. Spirea is coming back into bloom now. Under both of my larger limelight hydrangeas, I have Labella Pock, and I'll give us a close up on that in just a second. Right here at the entrance to the garden, we have a beautiful service berry in bloom. The blooms never seem to last very long but they carpet the garden nicely with their petals. I haven't mulched this area of the garden yet. I'm still working on dividing perennials and moving things around in this area. So let's take a closer look at Labella Pock. I was only able to get my hands on 100 this year, but it's such a wonderful variety it starts out more of an orangey pink and ages out to a coffee color. In front of it, I have planted some catmint. Right next to that, I have golden sage, some bearded iris, alliums, by Julia. Cheerfulness is just starting to bloom. So I believe I have 250 Negrita Double in the main flower walk. And last fall, I decided to create my own mixes. So we'll see how that works. So right next to it, we have Apricot Impression. So where we have Negrita Double, we have Apricot Impression with it. And then where we have Purple Pride, which I don't think is blooming yet, we have Salmon Impression. So let's tackle the main flower walk like this. We'll do this side on the way down. We'll swing through the hydrangea room and come back and review what's on this side before we're heading over to the driveway garden. So I have a lot of holes in here still as I've been moving things around. So sorry about that. Exotic Emperor is still in bloom. Just a fabulous Fosteriana tulip. It almost doesn't look like a tulip. It's so beautiful. So I think the main tulip show will happen next week, if you wanna tune back in for that. So here we have the salmon impression, and it's more of a gentle light pink. And from what I remember, this aged out to almost an apricot. And then down here I have Movado. That one's just starting as well. Lots more perennials coming back to life. 
Siberian iris, peony, veronica, and lots more tulips everywhere. So here's a nice moment. We have our flower lady right here, and I picked her up from Home Goods a few years ago. She's cracked on the back, so they gave me, I think it was 25% off, and I just love her so much. So I have Bleeding Heart planted around her. I love Bleeding Heart. I love all heirloom flowers. I'm really an old soul. So I love any flower that stood the test of time. Last week I mentioned that this bright yellow daffodil was supposed to be bell song, and I was asking what you all thought it was and someone said sweetheart. And I looked that up and it does seem like it might be sweetheart after all. So I'm undecided on whether or not I'll dig up the yellow tool or yellow daffodils and try again, or whether or not I'll just go ahead and leave them. But let's take one more look at all of these before we continue on. We're supposed to get two days of rain and I'm not sure how heavy the rain is going to be. So here we have Apricot Delight. I just love this tulip. And it's even taller than this when you plant it in the ground. Really, really great for cutting. So here we have Movado. I really like that one. Nice, bold color. Right here we have Accent Daffodils. Beautiful Ivory Daffodil. Really striking, bright peach in her cup. Back here I have Salome, and I wanted to show this one again because last week I mentioned that the heads hung down, but they did perk up in about a week's time, and now I think I really love Salome. I'll put the spelling of that on the screen in case I'm not saying it correctly. So here's the daffodil that I'm thinking might be Sweetheart now. And thank you all so much for your comments. I know I was definitely able to identify our mystery hellebore. So here's kind of the look from inside the main flower walk, looking towards the newly painted garage. And if I keep swinging us around, you'll be able to see over to the hydrangea room. And we'll head over there in just a second. Back behind the bench, I mainly have Pueblo, which is the same daffodil I have at the entrance to the main flower walk. Junquilla daffodil that's just such a great performer in the garden and the vase. I think there might be a few Delmasha in here that I forgot about. But this area fills in also with Mardigan lilies. If you've never grown a Mardigan lily, stop everything you're doing and order some because the smell of a Mardigan lily is absolutely amazing. Here we have more salmon impression. That really is such a beautiful tulip, isn't it? Back behind that, more exotic emperor. And I really like the picture that's created right here. Salmon impression, exotic emperor, Pueblo daffodil, apricot delight tulip, Salome daffodil, we have the stone rug with my grandma's lamb's ear. Here's a older hedge of the golden sage. Solomon seal just coming back to life now. So here's kind of a blend I was trying on my own, so we'll see how this works. So this is apricot impression with Negrita double. And I think we'll have to wait until next week to see how we like that. A lot of people were asking for an update on the Insta Hedge and the Hummingbird Fence. So when we had the pad laid, the library installed, and then subsequently basically had to do that all over again when we had it moved, the fence and the hedge had to come out three times in the middle of winter. So I wouldn't say it's doing great. Some of the arborvitaes did die but there's at least one or two alive within each unit. 
So all we did was, since we had to basically remove the whole thing to let all the trucks come in, I decided I would rather have the fence on the interior. So that's what you're seeing right now. So there's the hydrangea room and here's Grace. Let's head into the library. So the main thing I was working on this week was getting all my raised beds back in a workable location and getting them level because we had had that really bad drainage issue all the way back here. And so I'll kind of show you where I landed for the time being. I don't feel like this is the permanent solution for this area, but it's going to get me at least through the spring growing season and then I'll go from there. So eventually what I would like to do was pull, is pull out these two raised beds just a little bit wider and do the same thing with these four beds so that each path is a little bit wider. So these front two raised beds have ranunculus in them. And I believe I planted these out on February 27th. And I think I only had to cover them one time this year. One other thing that was interesting, once we moved the library forward, this area over here, which I still need some more mulch for, you can see the cardboard there, became full shade. Also in the very early spring, most of, well, I would say half of the raised beds closest to the library were also full shade. And I thought that was gonna be a really big problem. But I think as the sun changes, as we head into summer, that might correct itself. But once these tulips bloom, I wanna pull these beds out so we have a little bit of a wider path into the library. So the two central tulip beds are pink tulips, Janice Joplin, Pink Impression, and a few others. Here we have a tulip, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, Mondial, please correct me if I'm wrong. A beautiful white tulip and it's really nice. I'll show you the view looking back in a sec, just to see all these white tulips with the white daffodils in the hydrangea room. So here's kind of what I've been working on the last few days. Now this was level yesterday, but now it looks like I need to fix the back there. So I'll get to that before the rain starts. But basically what I did was just embrace the fact that now we had two different levels in the garden. And so I leveled these two beds to be even with the library. And then I'm not sure if this is gonna come across on camera or not, but these are essentially a foot higher than these. So you almost step down into this new raised bed area. And these are a foot lower than this bed. I don't know what happened here, that must have just, sunk in overnight and just in terms of trying to deal with this problem quickly i just decided to mulch this whole area grace is in the compost pile right now so for the time being i just used what i had i had some thin man arborvitae so i'm planning on just having a hedge of thin man arborvitae right there to disguise the compost pile and the stick pile Back here is where we have our pear tree and it's in bloom at the moment. And I might need to build, uh-oh, <laughs> I might need to go ahead and build a box around the compost pile just for Grace's sake because she does want to eat it. But here's the look from these two loungers. And I did talk about putting sweet peas on this TP trellis that I made yesterday. I think instead I'm going to do cup and saucer vine and butterfly pea, only because in my area, sweet peas really peter out when it gets hot. And I don't think I wanna to have to change out the planting right there. So I'm gonna do sweet peas on the trellises from Plow and Hearth, and I'll probably put those in today. In this bed and this bed, we're going to have all of our Saving Grace dahlias. That's the original Saving Grace, not her family of seeds, but just her. Straw flower is planted now. But I really do like the view from back here now. We have the Santa Rosa plum, the pear. Then we have two tart cherries, a green apple. I'm not sure on that variety. I just call it summer Rambo. And then we have our Macintosh here. So still a just a little bit of destruction, 
where I think I'll just plant some grass seed for now. But that's kind of the progress report on how the raised bed area is shaping up. And I'm glad that we can at least now move on and get some things planted. So here in the hydrangea annex, I have some summer snowflakes planted. I also had a hundred ice follies daffodils, but I did go ahead and cut all of those. I did the same thing in this bed as I'm doing in the hydrangea room. Lots of fever few, some alba bleeding heart. Down here I have a variegated Jacob's ladder. I kind of need more fever few in this garden, but this garden I really haven't paid any attention to yet this growing season. I really enjoy the picture that's happening right here. And you can probably see the arborvitae hedge a little bit better here. You can see, you know, one's dead there, but then the next one's fine. So we're gonna give it a year and see what happens. So the hydrangea room is the only garden that is completely planted up, done, and mulched for the growing season. In case you're brand new, I'm kind of catching up on all my gardening from just some things that happened in my life where I basically had to just take a month off of work. But there are some amazing, amazing daffodils in this area. This is a brand new daffodil. I've never grown it before. It's called lingerie. And isn't it amazing? This is my new favorite daffodil. It just has loads of swirled petals and ivory and yellow. And so this entire garden is blanketed with lingerie and white lion daffodils. And I just think it's so magical. You know, I really love bulbs because I think it gives you the opportunity to paint a picture that is not there, that you just cannot see until months and months later. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But in this garden, it really worked. It's really the picture I had in my head all along. So to show you the difference, here's White Lion. So it's a little bit more of um, a pointed Corona versus Let's see if we can get two next to each other. So here's lingerie and here's white lion. Similar, but if these are ever the same price, definitely go for lingerie. More summer snowflakes mixed into this area. And so let me show you the view. If you come through the gate and you just park straight ahead I just can't get over how beautiful these lingerie daffodils are. I need at least a thousand more in my life. I had asked about the name of this hellebore last week and someone had mentioned true love and I think that is what it is. So thank you so much for that. So we have that mix of hellebores and daffodils in this garden. But let's circle around because this might be the only tour where we see lingerie and white lion daffodil looking this good. So let me know what you think about the yellow daffodils in the background. Should I go ahead and take them out? I think I should, shouldn't I? Because I really only wanted ivory colored daffodils in the back garden but you'll see in the driveway garden, the lawn over there has a lot of yellow daffodils. Maybe I'll move them over there. The thought of moving any more soil around seems overwhelming at the moment. But isn't that glorious? I could just sit out here all day and stare at this area. Hellebores plays so nicely with the daffodils. I just love it. Oh, one other thing I did in this garden is the strawberry sundae or vanilla strawberry, whichever one gets larger, was right here. And I have since moved that to the fence line 
and replaced it with an Invincible Spirit 2 Hydrangea. Once again, keeping it just a little bit lower here in the backyard and using those really large panicle hydrangeas over near the new fence line. I'm really enjoying having the garage be this beautiful dark slate color. I'll link again um, the Perennial Gardens YouTube channel so you can check them out. We're going to have three guest garden tours coming up very soon. Those will be Wednesday at 7 a.m. Wonderful gardeners from all over the globe. I can't wait to share that with you. I'm coming up on a work deadline here on Monday. After that, I'll be back to normal blogging here on YouTube. Here's a uh, dwarf lilac right here. I think I failed to mention last week that there's also penstemon in this garden, quite a lot, and I have never seen it bloom before. So this year will be the year to enjoy that as well. More lingerie daffodils. Right next to that, Del Nishaw. There's Grace. I decided to limb up the Japanese cedar just a bit, mainly for airflow purposes. Also, so you could see through into the hydrangea room and see all of these beautiful daffodils right here. But more so than anything, just for better airflow and a little bit more light here in the main flower walk. So still working on this area, still moving things around, creating the new picture for 2024. I have another mystery daffodil over here. Let me know if you recognize it. I have absolutely no idea what this one is. I don't even remember planting daffodils back here, but I must have planted them because they're planted in front of each trellis. And these trellises have false hydrangea vines, oops, <laughs> growing up them. I think that's the third year for the false hydrangea vine. They haven't grown much in previous years. And then in between those, I have winter berries. So one, two, three female winter berries, a crepe myrtle, and then the male winter berry is tucked right back in there. I think this daffodil is Silver Smiles. Correct me if you think I'm wrong about that. I've had that one for a long time and I can't really recall. So I probably won't get around to mulching this area for two more weeks. I wanna still move around a lot of perennials and I've also seeded in some things like I seeded in some purple alyssum all through here to grow in with the golden sage. So I think we've seen pretty much everything that's back here. We'll come back for the book talk, but let's head over to the driveway garden now. So I did receive a request for a closer look at what's in the driveway garden. So I'll try to go ahead and give you a closer look at things today. There is a ton of chickweed in this garden, which I just started to tackle yesterday, but you're going to see a lot of it. So once these tulips bloom here, which are vibrant red and deep maroon tulips, I'll go ahead and pull them and then work on that new path. It's going to be a stone path, same stone that I used in the hydrangea room, which will lead you right to this bird bath and then it will just stop. And my hope is that by having this path here, it'll stop people from kind of just walking through the garden. But let's go ahead and take a look at the naturalized daffodil meadow. So we've got some really great varieties in the daffodil meadow. This one here is a split corona variety called Lemon Beauty. You can hear the Amish buggy in the background. <laughs> you can always tell if it's a tourist or not based on how the person passes the buggy. But I just love Lemon Beauty. This is a really great split corona and these have really bulked up since last year. If you like yellow daffodils, I would recommend this one called Shearborn. Look at all of those layers of petals. Gorgeous. 
more lemon beauty and then let's see if i can walk through here without tripping there's a lot of shrubs back here lots of dandelions this one is called british gamble this one's called avalanche and i just love this daffodil so much i've talked about it a couple times but the fragrance on here is strong but it's a very pleasant fragrance if you don't like early cheer because the fragrance is so powerful but maybe a little off-putting this one is highly fragrant but a pleasant fragrance i really don't know what this daffodil is let me know if you recognize it over here we have poeticus i think this one just started blooming yesterday and i just added this one in this year so there's cragford and this is planted in the lawn behind my flower stand where we have the Rose of Sharon's. And there we have my very handsome husband heading to work. <laughs> He's creeping to work. <laughs> Maybe he'll come out riding his bike. But this is how these gardens connect. So I'm right here next to one of our pussy willows. We have the daffodil meadow. And then the driveway garden has slowly become, I would say, slightly formal but mainly it's a garden full of bulb successions oh he's riding his scooter to work today <laughs> in the front garden i finally got around to pruning the incredible hydrangeas the tulips that i have here in this box i believe are brownie and this apple tree above us is budded up i still need to go ahead and clean up all of this liriope but that's <laughs> grace is like come on back here mom that's how all the gardens connect so now let's go ahead and head into the library and i'll show you some of my favorite books on garden design for those of us who aren't garden designers what do you say grace our rain barrel is currently empty so i'm really glad we're going to be getting a lot of rain the next two days how about this view, friends? You know, I need to finish the taxes today and maybe sitting out here will help motivate me to finally just get it done once and for all. Oh, I guess I haven't shown you the mirror that I got. You know, I really wanted to get an antique mirror, but I just couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. So I saw this one on Amazon and it really just seemed to be the perfect size. So I can put a link to this if you want in the description section. I made this arrangement yesterday, so let me grab the books. So I definitely wanna preface this section by saying that I have such admiration for landscape designers, landscape architects, people that design gardens for a living. Um, for me personally, since I'm not a landscape designer, I'm just a gardener, I find that just sometimes looking at gardens that I admire is what helps me the most. And all the better if books that these gardeners have written talk about garden design in them. So this one, The Complete Gardener by Monty Don would be my recommendation. Monty does have a new book that just came out and I read through that the other night. I would say his newest book is almost more for beginners, but I guess what I really like about this book by Monty Don in particular is that he goes garden by garden in this book, showing you the garden and talking about how he created it. But he also talks a lot about design, pathways, plants. Let me show you the index. You know, planning the design, paths, trees, hedges, lawns. I just really love this book. I love all of his books, but in terms of design, I think this one is my favorite. Now let's look at another one. So this is a book that you probably have to get from the library. I think it's out of print. It's by Jack Staub, which is one of my favorite authors. Unfortunately, Jack is no longer with us. I believe his um, husband is still alive and maybe living in Florida now. And the photographs by Rob Cardillo. I think Rob Cardillo is the best garden photographer in the world. Hands down, I buy any book where he's the photographer. So this book does not talk about garden design but the gardens that are in this book are so inspiring. I never tire of looking at them. 
I never tire of looking at the images. Sometimes I can just sit in here and look at one page and get inspired to do something completely new in my garden. So if there's any way you can get your hands on this book, I promise you will not regret it. Just watch out. Sometimes when a book goes out of print, it gets really expensive on the internet. So this is definitely one I would see if your local library has. Love it. Love, love, love Jack Staub. And actually this book I'm also going to recommend is also by Jack. So Jack and his husband were the owners of Hortulus Farm, which you used to be able to tour. I do not think that their actual gardens are available for touring anymore. It's kind of turned into a nursery, but Jack does talk about garden design in this book. And I would say of when I first started designing this garden, this was the book that really helped me picture how I wanted certain areas to look and not like I'm an expert at all, <laughs> like not at all. I'm always messing up and failing but I just feel like I can relate to their style. Um, we're in a similar location. We're only about an hour and a half from each other. And they really wanted to embrace Pennsylvania and Delaware rather than try to create something that didn't make sense here. They wanted to embrace our plants and embrace what grew well here. So this is a great book. I think this is on Amazon and it should not be too expensive. And really it covers all elements of garden design. And then this book I recommended the other day, The Cottage Garden by Klaus Dalby. Once again, I tend to just lean into this book more for the photographs. It's well written and I really enjoy what's written in it. But for me, I come back to this book for the inspirational photographs. And it's just great to see so many different gardens in one book, because within this book, I don't know, there's hundreds of gardens. In Chasing Eden, this is just about Hortulus. This is probably about maybe 50 gardens, maybe a little bit less, maybe 30 to 40 gardens. And then of course this one is just Monty Don's garden. But those are my picks for garden design books for those of us who aren't garden designers. Let me know what your favorite books are on this topic. Well, friends, I think that brings me to the end of this week's Garden Walk and Talk. I'd love to hear about what's going on in your garden, what you're looking forward to. I think by next week we'll be looking really good here in terms of tulips. Will I have the garden fully mulched by then and weeded? Well, probably not if I'm being honest but hopefully I'll be one step closer to getting everything closer to that final picture that I've imagined in my mind. But it's all about enjoying the journey. And definitely this year, I would say my motto is progress over perfection. <laughs> and I love this time of year because it really feels like more so than anything else, hope is really on the horizon. Would you agree? I hope you have a wonderful day, friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye.